Hello, my friends. In this uh, video, I'm trying to point out some features about ellipses by presenting six different questions with many ideas. Also, I'm putting a complete, complete steps of the solutions. Also, at the end of this video, you can find, as usual, three practice questions. You can do it yourself, please. And then the answers only are provided there. Please, before we start, let me take a few moments to highlight the important rules used in ellipses. As you can see, there are two slides here before we start the questions. The first one about horizontal. Ellipses that has a major axis horizontal. These are shifted ellipses. Shifted means the, the uh, center is not zero, zero. It is HK, as you can see here. So the equation we use is X minus H squared over A squared plus Y minus K squared over B squared is equal to one where A greater than B. Remember in ellipses, always A is the bigger number. And we have here the length of the major axis. This is the major axis, the big one here, 2A, and the length of the minor axis is 2B. So the center is H U K. We have two foci, F and F prime. So plus or minus C zero. So the first one is C zero. And then the second one is minus C zero. Then we add H and K because we have a shifted ellipse. The vertices, this is V and V prime on, on the sides of the major axis. And these are the endpoints of the major axis. So they are plus or minus A, plus H and then zero plus K. Always in ellipse, we can use C squared is equal A squared minus B squared. The endpoints of the minor axis, the minor axis, the small one. This one here is the minor axis. It's zero plus H plus or minus B plus K. So the important part here is to find A squared and B squared from the equation. This equation is in standard form. So A squared is the bigger number. Same thing will happen if we have a major axis vertical. <clears throat> so we have this equation, X minus H squared over B squared, Y minus K squared over A squared. A squared is the bigger in both cases. So we look where is the bigger number. And the length of major axis is always 2A. The length of the minor axis is 2B. Center is H to K. The center here is the midpoint of F, F prime and also the midpoint of V, V prime. So the midpoint of the foci and the midpoint of the vertices. The foci and the vertices always they lie on the major axis. This formula is the same. C squared is equal A squared minus B squared. Let us start. Now, the first question is a medium question. Given the equation of the ellipse, equation is ready. 8 x minus 4 squared plus 25 y plus 5 squared is equal 50. Find the eccentricity. Take a moment to think what is the formula for eccentricity. I think you know that and how to find it. But first, you can notice here that this equation is not arranged. You have to rearrange it. You have to put it in standard form, like the equation we have seen in the first two slides. Okay, let's start. So I take the equation, the given one, rearrange it. I wrote here in details, everything we need. Rearrange the given equation, write it in standard form. Standard form means we have to have one on the right side. So I just divide by 50, every term here. Divide by 50, divide by 50, divide by 50. What will happen? This one here, eight over 50 cannot be canceled. So we divide by two, divide by two, we get four over 25. 
This one divided by 25, we get two there, and there is one. This is the one that we need. This is the standard form of ellipse, this one here. You can do it very fast. And now we look here now. 25 over 4 is a number, and 2 is another number. Not, not nice numbers, I know. Usually we have 49, we have 36, we have 25, we have 16. But now, on purpose here, I put some numbers that are, I can call them ugly numbers. 25 over 4 and 2. Which one is bigger? This is the question. Just look for the bigger one. The bigger one for sure is 25 over 4. So that is a squared. Then if you look up, and there is an X. Okay. So A squared is the number which is the bigger number, A squared. So A will be 5 over 2. Directly, the other one will be B squared. So C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. I can put the numbers there, 25 over 4 minus 2, 17 over 4. Take the square root of both sides, you can find C, plus or minus, square root of 17 over 2. Now the eccentricity formula, E equals C over A. So C is there, square root of 17 over 2, A is 5 over 2. When you simplify, you get square root of 17 over 5. Let's go to question number 2. Uh, write the equation in standard form. So I gave you the equation in general form, expansion. It's already expanded. Find the following four things we have to find. The center, the vertices, domain, and range. Take, take a moment. I think you know what to do here. To write the equation in standard form, you have to remember something important. Completing the square. I advise you to pause for a little time and then complete the square on the X, complete the square on the Y, and check the equation on the next slide. Let's see. Now I put the details here. This is the given equation. We need to complete the square on the X, complete the square on the Y. If you forget completing the square, I will try to explain it here and in another example. I put all the x's together. You see 4x squared minus 40x. I put all the y's together and then I leave the number here. Just leave it, this 100. So in the x squared and in the y squared, both I have to make the coefficient of x squared 1. I have to make it 1. How can I make it 1? Just take four common factor from only the terms that have x's. And then in the y squared, it's already the coefficient here one. Sometimes it's not one like five or four or three or minus. Just take it out, common factor. Now, go inside the bracket of the x. You see inside here. Go to the coefficient of x minus 10. Divide by two, always. Okay, if you divide by two, mentally, you get minus five, square it. So we add 25 and subtract 25. That means we are not changing the question. Because if, if we subtract a number, you have to add it. Or if you add a number, you have to subtract it. So it's the same. You cannot change the question. Let's go to the y here. In the bracket, 20y, I go to the coefficient of y. 20 divided by 2, 10, square it. So we add 100, subtract 100 inside the bracket. You see that? And then I have the 100 from the question. This is outside from the question. Let's continue. The first three terms here, x squared minus 10x plus 25, is perfect squared. We call this perfect squared. x minus 5 squared. And then minus 25. Then in the y here, y squared plus 20y plus 100, this is a perfect squared. So y plus 10, all squared, minus the 100. Now, if I have a number outside here like 4, I multiply back. 
four times this bracket, you see this one here. Four times minus 25, what do you get? Minus 100. And there is here minus 100. And there is plus 100. So altogether is minus 100. Take it to the other side, becomes 100 plus there on the other side. Check it yourself, please. Check the last line here to get this equation here. Then divide by 100 to make this number one. So if you divide by 100, you leave it here, divide by 100, four, you get 25. So that's the equation now. So what do we have to find? The center, vertices, domain, and range. See the bigger number here, you see the 100 is bigger than 25, so the bigger number under the y. So this is the uh, ellipse, you can see the ellipses. Measure x is a vertical, because the bigger number under the y, it's very nice, it's in the corner there. The bigger number is a squared. And then for sure the other number will be b squared. So the center h, okay, h is you can find it from the equation, x minus h, y minus k. So here k is minus 10. So that's the center here in the middle. The vertices, five, zero, and then five minus 20. This is the domain from zero to 10. Domain you can see here, I put in details. You see minus five to five, see the domain here? Minus five to five, you see this one here? Minus five to five, you can get it from the x-intercept. Put y zero if the center is at the origin. And then you add h, because h is related, shifted to the x. The range also, take y-intercept here, minus 10 to 10, then you add k. So you get minus 20 in the y, minus 20 to zero. Another way you can find domain and range, you can sketch it as I did here. If you sketch the graph, put the center, put A, put B, you can get easily these numbers. Okay. Let's see question number three. Now here we have to find the equation. Given an ellipse with four psi minus one and two, three and two, there are two points, two four psi, passing through the point three, five. Find the equation, find the length of major axis. You, you remember, I think, the length of major axis is 2a. And the equation we have to find, we have to construct. What do you think we can do here? How do we know the important part here? How do we know which equation to use? I mean by that slide number one or slide number two. Is it a vertical measure axis or horizontal measure axis? How do you know? I will show you on the next slide. How do you know before we start solving? I call it sketch. It's very easy to do this. See, given an ellipse in the four side, just put the numbers on the graph. Just put the numbers there, minus one and two. You see that one here, three and two. So what do you see? Just this ellipse here, you can imagine it's a horizontal. See, because the foci will lie inside on the major axis. So there is no way we can have the ellipse vertical major axis. So just imagination from the foci, you can know that. Okay, how to do now the equation? So at least we can write now, you can write the equation. To find the equation, you have to find A or B. Let's see, we have foci F, F prime here, you see this one here, F, F prime. So the major axis is horizontal, we said that. Distance between F, F prime is 2C. See, this is on the same line. So the absolute value of A minus B will be the distance, so simple. 2C, the distance between the two foci. So C will be two, C squared will be four. Just finish now C. Let's see the center. Center is the midpoint of the line segment joining F prime and F. I put also for you here from algebra, the uh, midpoint formula, so simple and so easy. X1 plus X2 over two, Y1 plus Y2 over two. 
put the numbers you get the center one and two now this is the difficult part in this question to find a since we have one point given on the ellipse just be careful please here see this point here p three five any point you can have on the ellipse you see this ellipse here if you have one point always 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 in ellipses the distance from p to f you see that from distance from p to f plus the distance from p to f prime i wrote it here we call this uh, ellipse definition distance from any point not p any point on the ellipse distance from p to f plus distance from p to f prime equals to a we have f we have f prime we have p just find the distance formula i think you know distance formula x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared take the square root if you do all this you can pause a little now i think it's a good idea and then find a from the last line here try to find a for me here and see if you can get it on the next slide we will get a equals four just simplify the numbers easily in radicals here so you get square root of 25 is five square root of nine is three when you add you get eight eight equals two a a will be four so when you square it a squared is equal 16. now we have c squared we have a squared we can find b squared easily 12. so now that's the equation see where is the bigger number under the x their x because it's horizontal and i put here the points now you can see minus one two three two these are given the four psi in the middle here it looks very nice the graph uh, the center there one two it goes that in the middle one two length of measure x is two a it's eight I put the domain and range here as a bonus. You can enjoy it. Now, question number four. Nice question. I gave you something there, x, y, x squared, y squared. And then I ask, what does this equation represent? Nice idea here. What do you think we can do? What does this equation represent? Can you answer by looking? No, the answer is no. You have to try. So what do you think the, the main idea here? The main idea is put it in standard, put it in standard, change it, make it standard, like either equation one in slide number one or equation slide number two. Then you can see, is this ellipse or something else? It might be an ellipse. So just completing the square, the whole idea here again and again and again. So rearrange, the given equation by completing the square on the x on the y put all the x's together put all the y's together you see now you have to take common factor in the x outside three and also you have to take a common factor in the y as four and leave this 39 like we did a few minutes ago in the hundred just leave that 39 at the end it will be counted now we go inside the bracket, completing the square. I'm explaining again. After we make the coefficient of x squared here one, we have to make it one first. Then take half coefficient of the x. So minus two divided by two. It's minus one. Square it. Remember to square it. So you get plus one minus one you add and subtract let's do it on the y here y coefficient one take the coefficient of y minus six divide by two minus three square it so you get nine you add nine subtract nine now continue in the next slide you can pause a little here i think and then try by yourself completing the square here and see what you will get on the next slide to check yourself all right let's see now i have in the bracket here x minus one squared and there's a minus one remember only the first three terms will make perfect 
y squared minus 6y plus 9, this will be perfect. Now we have to multiply. 3 times this is there. 3 times minus 1, minus 3. 4 times the first bracket, 4 times 9, minus 36, plus 39. It's already in the question. So what do we get here? Oh boy. We get 3x minus 1 squared plus 4y minus 3 squared is equal to 0. Now suppose this 0 is 1. Suppose this 0 here is 1. That's an ellipse. But it is not 1. It happened, the equation, you see this equation here? The question, the equation, this one here, it looks like an ellipse. This is, it looks like an ellipse, but it is a false ellipse. It is not an ellipse. Because we have zero. So when we say graph it, this is the graph. It's only one point. Now let's see question number five. Find an equation of ellipse in standard form with given vertices. Two vertices are given and two foci f1, f2, and the vertices are v1, v2. Here I think it's a good idea that you pause a little and then try to think what type of ellipse we have here. Is this a vertical major axis or horizontal major axis? Because we have to decide on which type of equation. Then you can find the center, uh, A, B, C, etc. As I did before, I give you the idea, which is a little sketch, very fast sketching. And then you can get the idea. From sketch, you can get the idea. Okay, let's go. Now here is question number five, the sketch only. You can see the vertices I put in one color, V1 minus 312 and minus 3 minus 8. You can see that so clear. And the foci I put in another color. See, always the foci and the vertices, they lie on the major. So from these four points, you can imagine this is the ellipse here, the green one. You can just imagine it. So you can find here the center. You see the center will be in the middle. Center, midpoint between the uh, foci or the midpoint between the vertices. It's up to you. Also, you see here F1, uh, F2, the uh, distance here between the, these foci, it will be 2C. Okay, so now the major axis is vertical. Why? Because the foci lie on the major axis. Distance F1, F2 is 2C. So I put 8 minus minus 4, absolute value, remember, of A minus B, the distance. So C will be 6. C squared will be 36. Now here for the center, you have two ways to do it. Center is the midpoint of the line segment, either F1, F2, or V1, V2, it will give you the same answer. I have chosen this one here, the yellow. So I can put here the midpoint formula. Remember that's from algebra. X1, X2 over two, Y1 plus Y2 over two. Put the numbers there, you get the center, C, H, and K. Now also, I can find A from here, the distance from the center that we found minus three, two, to any vertex. We have vertex one, vertex two. So C to V vertex, any vertex, 12 minus A is, is A. So A will be 10, A squared will be 100. Now we can continue easily here. From the last slide, we get C squared we found, A squared is 100. To find B in ellipse only, remember, I will stress this again. In ellipse only, you can use this formula, C squared is equal A squared minus B squared. Because we have very similar formula in hyperbola. You can see the video on hyperbolas. C squared is equal A squared plus B squared, but not here. For the ellipses, you have C squared is equal A squared minus B squared. Plug the numbers in, 3600, you will get B squared is equal 64. Just write the equation. I put this uh, information here for eccentricity is equal C over A you get three over five. 
let's have a look now at question number six. This is really, really an interesting question because we have to find the value of a little variable here, e. You see this e here is the same as this e. The only thing given is the equation. And I said in the question, this, the graph of this equation is an ellipse. Nothing is given there, no vertices, nothing for psi, no a squared, b squared, c squared. I advise you really to pause here and try to think what can you do, even if you see the solution another time, or you can check it after a few minutes. So given the equation here, we need, we need to find the value or values. So it might be one number E, two numbers, five numbers, 10 numbers, infinity of numbers, we don't know. We have to find the value or values of E if the graph is an ellipse. Okay, suppose you try it, I will show you now what to do. For sure, since we have an equation like this general form, so I can rearrange the equation, just multiply here, distribute the four on the x4 on the two y becomes four x minus eight y, put all the x's together and all the y's together and just leave the e for a moment. So you know what, what is the story we have seen many times, we need to complete the square on the x on the y, it might take you a minute. But also there is something strange here, if I take four common factor in the x terms, so it will be x squared plus x, as you can see here. y squared, see the coefficient here is one, so I didn't have to do anything. Just put it in the bracket, y squared minus eight y. Let's start with the y now, Len, so easy. Minus eight divided by two is minus four. Square it, we add 16 and subtract 16. Now, what is the coefficient of the x? It is one. See, we don't have to write it here, it's hidden. This is the coefficient of x is one. I put it here on purpose so that you can see it. It is one, but we don't write it. Take half coefficient of x. So, half of the one is one over two. Square it, one over four. So we have to add one over four, subtract one over four. Now we can continue on the next slide to see how the completing the square will finish. See this one, the y is easy, y squared minus eight y plus 16. This is a perfect square, so y minus four all squared. This one, it will be x plus half all squared. Now let's multiply the four. Four times this bracket is this bracket here. Four times minus one over four, you get minus one. Remember, you get minus one. Put here y minus four squared. Minus one or minus 16 is minus 17. Take it to the other side, 17. Take e to the other side, minus e. Now this is an ellipse, you see this one? I told you on the question, this is an ellipse. So this is the tricky part. This is an ellipse. What do we do with 17 minus E? That's the number on the right side. It should be positive. It should be positive, cannot be negative, cannot be zero. So by positive mean, we mean it's greater than zero. This is when we say something is positive, greater than zero. So I have linear inequality, simple linear inequality. Take 17 on the other side, change the sign. See, I have minus E greater than minus 17. Multiply with the minus, and remember in algebra, there is a rule, if you multiply with the minus in the inequality, you change the sign. Minus E greater than minus 17, which means E less than 17. So what are the numbers of E less than 17? All the numbers less than 17. So the values of E are from minus infinity 
until 17. We cannot take 17. It's not included. It's an open here. Any number below 17. So we have many numbers there. You can try any number you like. Now, I have practice number one. This is equation in uh, expansion, general form. You have to complete the square for sure, then find these things. And then the second one, what does the equation represent? You have to check also by completing the square. Here, find the equation of the ellipse. I gave you the foci f1, f2, passing through the point 3, 1. Find the equation of the ellipse in standard form. The last slide here, you can feed the solution of practice one all the parts, uh, solution of the, the answer only in the practice two, the answer on the practice three. Well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope I can see you in another video, another topic. Thank you very much.